these boulders are a little bit on the big side. Okay, well, I've decided I am going to try and go down. Last time on Across the Mojave, I crossed the rugged Old Woman Mountains. Tired from 17 days of walking without a break, I now needed to cover another 29 dry miles, or 46 kilometers, before my next supply point. Well, apparently unhappy with my continued presence in the Old Woman Mountains, Mother Nature has conjured up the strongest tail, tailwind uh, windstorm that I've yet had. Um, so I'm complying, I'm getting out of here. Still a little before dawn. Right now the wind has actually died down a little bit so I can talk, but literally it was so windy I actually put a rock down on my sandwich so it wouldn't blow away. It was just that kind of wind. I mean, it's, it comes in gusts. When the gusts come, they're, they're big gusts. I could feel my sleeping bag last night. There were times when like, I could feel the wind trying to roll me over. It was never strong enough to actually roll me over, but like it was a sizable push just there in my sleeping bag. So anyway, uh, just continuing down this canyon I camped in. It looks like I'm actually not far from the mouth of the canyon where I'll get back out onto the alluvial plain. Um, today I have a long walk plan. I have to do, I think about 21 miles. Looks like we're starting to get dawn. Oh, and looks like the first rays of the sun are starting to hit the top of the granite mountains there on the right. Uh, and off to the left of the granite mountains there, with the light, red light starting to get on them, are the Marble Mountains. So I'll be basically heading to the backside of the Marble Mountains today. Finally entering the sunlight, coming down here to the toe of the foothills, just cutting off a little corner here. I don't know if it's wise or not, but you know, at some point maybe turn a little bit to the right. Oh, now if I could just walk down this ridge without being blown off to the left. Okay, my GPS tells me I've now come to the northwest corner of the Old Woman Mountains Wilderness. Now from here, I'll be out of Wilderness for the next several miles. Um, I'm heading that way towards the back side of the Marble Mountains, uh, where I'll enter the Trilobite Wilderness. But, but yeah, first I have to cross this valley, which is mostly not in the wilderness. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to wait for a train. We have this segment of rail was uh, completed in 1883 by a Southern Pacific company. And then it was operated by a bunch of different rail companies until it was acquired by Atchin Topeka Santa Fe in 1911, and they're now BNSF. And they obviously still operate the rail line. It's actually one of the busiest rail lines in, uh, in the nation, actually, serving as one of the major uh, carriers of containers and freight from the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach to consumers across the rest of the country. Um, this road here, I believe, is actually part of the old uh, National Old Trails Highway. Um, and this particular alignment shows up on maps starting at least as early as 1921. Um, and was probably still the, uh, the main highway when it was de designated as Route 66 in 1926. Um, because the current alignment, which you can see over there with that white bank, wasn't uh, that alignment wasn't created until 1933. And so it's not in very good shape, although if you look down in the wash here, you can actually see some of the original blacktop is actually still here. So it was definitely a paved road, although it's had a lot of debris washed over it um, since then. I believe if we walk just a little bit further this way, we should hit another old road that's even older, if we can find it. Yeah, here it is. A little harder to see. So here there's another road. And if we stand right in the middle of it, you can see it pretty clearly that there's a, the bushes have been taken down there. But this road actually shows up on maps, a map I have from 1915. Um, so this would be an earlier alignment of the National Trails, Trails Highway. The oldest road uh, created across the Mojave was graded by Seymour Alf in the winter of 1910, 1911. Um, I don't know if that was this road or if this is a, a road that was built a couple years after that. Interesting, Seymour Elf uh, had a blacksmith shop and, and, and uh, like a car maintenance garage in Daggett out near Barstow, which is apparently still there, although it's been moved. People uh, 110 years ago or so 
at least 105 years ago, this was the main route. Uh, if you wanted to get from LA to anywhere east by car. Would have been a lot different driving across the country back then, that's for sure. My impression is most of these roads, they were driving 15 miles an hour tops. So here we're coming up on the 1933 alignment of uh, Route 66. Um, so this was uh, built in 1933 and was the main road until uh, 1964, or, I don't know, telling the mid-60s when the Interstate 40 was built. Well, if I had in 4K, you could see the Interstate way there in the background. Um, you actually used to be able to drive this road uh, until 2014, when there were a bunch of uh, major flash floods damaged the bridges. Mac, you can see this bridge is damaged. You can see one of those uh, railing supports is broken off and there's some cracks in it. Okay, now it's just sort of this ghost highway that's out here with uh, nobody on it. I'm gonna go sit down on a boulder down there and have lunch. This looks like it's been repaired fairly recently. Got a new piece of wood, new fancy bolt plate with shims. So maybe they are working on restoring it. Yeah, there's another one on the other side too. It's overhauled March 2nd, 34, painted March 28th, 34. And then it says below that 415, 38 and 6, 8, 39. So at least this bridge has had some, some repainting and overhauling in the 30s. <laughs> yeah, no wonder they don't want people driving over these bridges though. I had no idea these were old wooden bridges built in the 30s. <laughs> Look, see, they got like tarred canvas wrapped over the top of these posts. Not quite sure what the purpose of that is, but it seems, uh, it seems like an old school way of doing things. I guess that's all I would say about that. It is sort of odd to sit down and have lunch next to a highway like this and not have a single car come by. I could have sat in the middle of the bridge for all the traffic. Okay, we're now entering the trilobite wilderness according to my GPS, so now I'll be back in the wilderness for the rest of the day. Okay, anyway, now I'm just heading to the point there of the corner of the Marble Mountains. Incidentally, I've been referring to this as the back side of the Marble Mountains. Uh, you know, there's no real front or back to a mountain range, but the west side is where all the road access is. So um, this side is just wilderness. So I've been to the Marble Mountains many times before on that side because you can drive up to it. Um, I've never actually been on this side of the Marble Mountains before. So that's why, I, I, in my mind, I think of this as the back side of the Marble Mountains. And then those are the Granite Mountains uh, up there, which are sort of the next big mountain range I have to go over. I've now been hiking for 17 and a half days. Um, out of a planned 35 hiking days, so that's halfway through the trip by time. Well, this certainly isn't the least barren stretch of desert I've crossed. Just gotta keep walking up to that point up there. Further than it looks, I think. Unfortunately. Well, the sun is set. Like I said, this mountain is definitely a little further than it looks. Uh, unfortunately, I knew the mileage coming into this. It was a long way still. We're getting to that time now where everything's real pretty. There's the colors, the lights back on the old woman mountains. And I guess that's probably the Paiute range back there. And these, I think, are the Clipper Mountains. And then the Providence Mountains have just a little bit of light because they face the wrong way. And same with the Granite Mountains. But I think I'm going to make it to the corner of the mountain before it's too dark. Starting to get some pretty pink lights. It's the most serious barbed wire fence I've hit yet, and that's at nighttime. Well, this is unfortunately the sort of fence that. I need to take my pack off. Uh, unless it's so soft I can just push it down. No, I don't think it's going to quite happen. Yeah, I'll just go under this one. Be limb from time to time. Uh, these are grazing rights on public land. And as part of that, they got to put up barbed wire fence. The problem is, no one ever comes and takes them down when they're done with the grazing lease. Ugh. Well, I have basically gotten to the corner of the mountain finally, so in principle I could camp anywhere. I'd like to get a little further around the corner so I can see where I'm heading tomorrow, but... 
as dawn grows near. I'm just packing up my camp here. I did it up last night making it around the corner of this mountain uh, a little bit so that I can see where I'm heading for. I'm pretty sure I'm heading towards that gap. Basically the low broad gap on the horizon up there. I'm starting to get sunlight on the granite mountains. I think they're fairly tall. I think they rise over 6,000 feet. 2,000 meters. There we have the sunrise where we are now. I just realized that I forgot to mention one other kilometer stone we passed last night as the sun was setting uh, was we passed 400 kilometers. Okay, YouTube, I have to be honest with you. I am planning to take a weekend. And I haven't had a single day off since I started this. I'm walking every day uh, for 18 days is um, taxing. Um, and, you know, more importantly, I'm actually a family man. I have a wife and a three and a half year old kid. Uh, I don't want him to forget who I am. It sounds like he misses me. And apparently the other day he told my wife something like, Mommy, you need Daddy to come home to help you with the cooking. So, uh, gotta go home for a few days, uh, about four days, uh, see my wife play with my kid, um, help out with some chores, and then I'm gonna come back out here in the desert and finish it. Um, you know, I'd like to, you know, dramatize this up. No, I planned this from the beginning. Um, you know, family comes first. There's something that's been, that's sort of romanticized about doing something all in one go, but uh, you know, generally people get to take weekends for most jobs, and this is technically part of my job. Probably gonna make another eight miles basically today, um, up over this gap, then a turn right, cross the interstate, and then get picked up at a road called Kel Baker Road that passes through the desert near here. Okay, so it looks like I'm finally coming up over the divide here. So now I just need to go about a mile down this canyon, complete a new milestone. I've just finished 256 miles. Um, not only is that a nice round number in binary, but it also marks the halfway point of our trip, uh, at least by distance. Um, so, and also it's about the point where we're gonna leave this nice picturesque canyon and start heading up across these hills here. Okay, so this uh, gas pipeline road up here marks the edge of the trilobite wilderness. Uh, approximately the northernmost part too. Uh, but more importantly, it's the closest part of the trilobite wilderness boundary to the um, uh, to the Mojave wilderness in the Mojave National Preserve. You notice there's actually a little man-made structure. It looks like maybe a little dam across that. I wonder if there's a water catchment up there. I don't see any water in it right now. Looks pretty dry. Maybe there's a water hole down there. That looks pretty dry too. But maybe in wetter years, this provides a little watering hole for the animals. If this has been a pretty dry year, to be fair. <laughs> okay, well there's the 40. I don't think I'm heading to it that way though. I think I'm heading this way. Yeah, I think that's where I'm going. Then there's that stream there, presumably comes through a culvert, which is where I plan to cross under the freeway. Now just the question is, what size culvert do you need to put that amount of water through that would go down through that wash? I'm sure that, that for that amount of water, it's gotta be a culvert big enough to get through. The question is through, is it gonna be easy? Like, can I just walk through it? Or run I have to like crawl or something? And is it gonna be full of snakes? <laughs> I have no idea, unfortunately, because this is not something that I had time to really investigate. Well, there's the freeway. That's a pretty imposing uh, berm there. I think I'm coming up to the last bend in here. So we'll see. How small is this culvert I need to go through? Oh, that doesn't look small at all. It's uh, round, like the kind of little drainage ditch that it could be here, but that looks pretty tall. I bet I can walk through that. No problem. And there you go, light at the end of the tunnel. 
pretty long tunnel, but uh, not gonna be any trouble walking through this one. Might have to take off my sunglasses though. Something about the radial stripes though is making me dizzy. I might have to close my eyes to walk this tunnel. Nice echo. Ladder. See, if you wanted, you could climb up to the space between the two halves of the freeway. I don't know if you could get through that grate up there without the key, but fortunately, we don't need to do that. Okay, and from here, it should be, I think, just over half a mile uh, to where my parents should be waiting for me to pick me up. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, we went into the freeway now crossing the Mojave National Preserve, which is basically a national park, but they don't call it a national park because there's no entrance fees and hunting is allowed under certain regulations. Uh, but it's basically a national park for all other intents and purposes. But we're not, still not in the Mojave Wilderness, because that doesn't start on the other side of Kel Baker Road. And again, I won't get there until after I take my break. We come over a hill and that looks like my parents' vehicle, so just a few more steps here. And here we are, the Mojave National Preserve. Time to go get a hamburger. <laughs> After some much needed family time, I now needed to head to a different kind of playground, crossing another 43 miles, or 69 kilometers, to my next supply point in just two days. A journey that would take me across my highest pass yet, as well as the second largest sand desert in California, known as the Devil's Playground. Anyway, just getting uh, dropped off here, ready to go. Having my picture taken next to the sign. Um, so yeah. Bye bye. Actually, I still need to look at my map. Um, figure out where exactly I'm heading for before I go anywhere. But we're already in the National Preserve. Uh, we just need to get now to the edge of the Mojave Wilderness uh, area. Goes me across Kel Baker Road here. No cars coming super close. Um, it should be about a mile and a, a little less than a mile and a half walking generally towards this mountain. Um, and that'll bring me to the corner of the Mojave uh, wilderness. It's not really a little service, it's a pediment, which is okay, but a little bit more up and down, not just a uh, flat surface. The plus side, I get to see these nice granite outcrops. Uh, so the mountains here I'm approaching are called the Granite Mountains. So you might guess that mostly made of granite or granite-like rocks, like granite diorite. Uh, actually, a pretty wide variety of ages, though. I think the granites here span from the Jurassic period, uh, maybe 170 million years ago, to the late Cretaceous, maybe 75 million years ago. So all within the, the realm of the dinosaurs. Um, but if I had to guess, these look like late Cretaceous granites, just from the way they look. Usually the Jurassic ones are a little darker in color, but eh, sometimes it's hard to tell. I didn't, unfortunately I don't have the geologic map with me, so I'm not actually exactly sure what age the rocks I'm heading over are. Okay, well, the GPS tells me that I should be back in the wilderness here. Uh, the Mojave Wilderness this time, which will be for the next couple days here. Uh, and I think from here, I'm going to head just past the right end of that brown ridge. Then behind, directly behind it, there's a big white rock. I think I'm heading to the right side of that rock. And most of this day is not too bad. Basically, um, starts with a bunch of alluvium. Then I have to jump over the toes of some ridges to stay in the wilderness area. And then I think I go over that ridge over that pass in the distance, which is further and higher than it looks. You know, one thing about walking around the desert is you get used to 
seeing these black dots and thinking they're bushes, but a lot of those black dots are actually juniper trees uh, and might be, you know, 10, 20, even 30 meters tall, uh, which, you know, as uh, desert plants go, it's pretty big. So it makes the mountains look smaller than you otherwise might realize. That pass is over 5,000 feet tall, above sea level, that is. I mean, it's there's probably more than 1,000 feet or 300 meters above my current elevation. I just look at my map more carefully here, uh, and it looks like it's one of these maps but it's actually got 20, a 20 meter contour interval, which is really rare. Usually there's, well, this is the US, so usually it's 40 feet. Uh, and some of the newer maps that are in metric uh, have a 10 meter contour interval. This one is a 20 meter contour interval, and I don't think I even realized that when I was planning this. <laughs> uh, so, uh, First of all, the, I think the pass there, I thought it was a little over 5,000 feet because I was extrapolating from the closest labeled contour. It was actually more like uh, 5,550 feet or about 1,690 meters for the pass above sea level. And so that's about uh, 650 meters or over 2,000 feet of elevation gain from where I started today. Net elevation gain. Because I need to go over a big ridge first um, that's going to add, you know, not quite 50% extra on top of that. So, um, and when I was planning this, I was, it estimated the elevation gain is half that. So, um, hopefully I can be fast enough despite this being more challenging than initially thought. So look at that brown mountain over there. I'm not mistaken. I think that's supposed to be a Rip Van Winkle mountain. It's supposed to look sort of like a sleeping person head to the left. Okay, well, we're finally coming up to the toes of the mountain here. You can start to see why these mountains maybe don't look all quite as giant from the distance because the rocks are huge. What looks like a little boulder from distance is taller than you are. Now, these granites, I think, look at my notes, these granites, I'm pretty sure, are about 75 million years old here. Actually, crossing mountains that are built out of rock like this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, but hopefully, I can find a way. Then I have to bring up the gloves when I get to that stage. Okay, well, we're coming up to our most robust looking barbed wire fence yet. I also don't really want to get more. Barbs in it. You missed it. Okay. Think that worked? Okay, success. Oh, you guys don't normally get to see me make the grunting noise when I pick up my pack. There you go. That's what it sounds like every time I pick up my pack. It's just it's normally off camera. Yeah, those mountains are definitely getting bigger. Right, the good news is this mountain is only like 10 boulders high. The bad news is each boulder is, looks like it's pretty freaking huge. I think I'm... I've... As I get closer, I keep reconsidering which route I should take. I think I'm going to head up just to the right of that little tree there and try and go basically straight up to the base of the big white rock. And then obviously stay on the right side of the big white rock since uh, that thing looks basically unclimbable. Guess I better start climbing. Here's where I just question it. Do I go up and over or see the crack? Actually kind of for up and over. Well, my left ankle is like, hey, you remember me? Oof. I'm glad it got the rest. The break. Oh, shit. These rocks are so much bigger than they look. I'm not close as they look from a distance. Okay, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to that gap of the rock over there. I think I had the right idea the first time. Probably could go over this, but I, I don't think I can get up that next one. I think it's bigger than it looks from here. I think that's gonna be the story of these, this boulder field is. Uh, bigger than it looks. Oof. Hopefully the GoPro does it justice. Uh.
Oh, the good news is that the gap between the rocks is thicker than it looks too. Should be able to get through there with the backpack, no problem. Touch it, see a little bit here, but make sure you open up for a moment. Getting up this kind of stuff is one thing, getting down it is. Oh, this is gonna be hard. Especially because everything is twice as tall as I thought it was, due to the not realizing the map with a 20 meter contour interval. I think maybe that first little bit was the worst. Makes it's not something to say until you get to the top. I reserve that sentiment for later. And all this to avoid a couple hundred yards outside the wilderness. Throwing all the gaps between the rocks and they're full of thorn bushes. Oh, and the thorn gorge is almost like fun. Honestly, none of the ways up this mountain look like fun. So we're just gonna push away through these thorn bushes. At least looks like I can't really fall very easily. Like I say, these are like the least thorny thorn bushes in the world. which is not saying that much, unfortunately, but I can get to the side and have to get through. Probably they're all bent downhill. So I'm fighting against the grain here. This is the last one is the cat claw. Ow, 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 I hate the cat claw. Please get out of my hat, sir. Okay. Oh, no major punctures. Oh, these rocks are getting nasty. Let me fall down. Oh. My hook is my crook. I don't have any hooks with me. My backpack is dragging above me. Can I do this? Where's the belly crawl? Ooh. Oh, that's the GoPro. Well, I didn't break the uh, screen. Sorry, GoPro. I left a little dent in you, but it's off to the side. Okay. So, don't belly crawl. Okay, but we can this little gap. This is the kind of thing that's really hard to get back on. I'm not even sure I can get out of here if I get on this one and push this. These are some tough mountains, that's all I gotta say. Is this the top of the ridge or is this it's a part way up? I can't tell. Ow, 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 I'm too inclined to have a good shot. They'd much prefer Juniper. Okay. I think this is the top of the ridge. Okay, these choy branches are dead. Already, anyway. Sorry, he did flight out. Okay. That was close. Just a couple little spines in there. I'm actually not sure how I'm getting down this mountain. If it's as nasty as it was up, or if it's nastier, or what. These boulders are a little bit on the big side for me, though. Oof. 
Okay, well, I'm pretty sure I'm headed down into the basin. I'm not exactly sure where the spring is. It's somewhere on the farther side. Uh, as long as they don't stay too far to the right, I'm not going to get out of the wilderness area, it looks like. So and that should be easy enough. And then from the spring, it's up to the gap up there, which uh, looks difficult. Um, but I guess I got over, well, I got up this one. I haven't gotten over yet. Over implies I need to get down the other side. Oof. So I guess let's get working on that. The problem is all these things are things that I can go down. Real pain coming back up. So I hope I don't get myself stuck in a dead end. Let's not go that way. Uh, can I get down there safely? Maybe off this boulder at the end? Ooh, not that wind blowing at me. Okay. Okay, actually, if I climb out of that boulder, I think I can edge my way off of that boulder. Oh. But this is the sort of thing that's a fucking pain with a backpack on. Maybe I can just lower the backpack. Only the context of my backpack survived that fall. Let's see if I can get down. Well, I got this down without too much difficulty. Now let's get down to the bag. See if it's intact. This sort of thing is so much easier without a backpack on though. I just hope nothing broke like the solar panels are actually probably the number one most breakable thing in there. And let's just hope we don't end up with another cliff down here that we're dead ended up. Obvious damage. Lost a little bit of skin on my belly there against the rock, unfortunately, because it made road up my shirt, but what can you do? So you can get a start to get a better view of the University of California Sweeney Granite Mountains Research Center, which I believe was founded in 1978. This is where uh, various researchers uh, including University of California researchers come to do desert research. The map actually shows the spring down in that valley. I don't see any sign of recent water there. I mean, there's some holes that animals dug a very long time ago, but... Uh, so I think there's going to be water. It's going to be one of these man-made things. This looks like an old pump of some sort. Not sure what the coils are for. Uh, these pipes look too rusty to be active. I'm not even going to try the valves on those. Uh, but what I see behind it though is those stairs, which look promising. Those look new. These things look like they date back to the uh, ranch days, back before this was UC property. We're lucky this leads up to a place where we can access spring water. thought I heard a dripping noise. Hot damn, it's a freaking tunnel under this rock. Huh. Well, there you go. Water. And this little cave thingy. Okay, well, I just need to pump a liter or maybe a little more than that. Didn't take me long and I'll be on my way. Very charming little grotto, complete with maiden hair ferns. But now I've got, I've topped off my water at least as much as I need for now, because there are more springs in the Granite Mountains. Now it's time for me to exit. Well, thank you. Now it's just a question of what's the best way up the mountain from here. And then the other question is, can I get over the mountain in the like two hours of remaining light we have? I think basically I want to head that way. Uh, up to the left a little bit. Okay, the problem is that looks nasty. This looks nastier, if that's possible. This is the stuff that once it gets dark it's going to be impossible. And let's just find a little hole down underneath the rock to sleep in. If it gets dark before I get across these mountains, a hole like that actually would work great. 
Just boulder after boulder. I ain't getting smaller anytime soon. Yeah, I think the likelihood I'm gonna get stuck on this mountain tonight is high. Uh, it's just a goddamn maze. Uh, I even go under. I mean, under is looking scary now that I have a drop if it goes down even further. There's a problem with under is my bag is keep catching on the rocks with the head. Doing the goddamn limbo. Ugh. Okay. I'm gonna take my pack off for this one, though. Of course, if I manage to like, get in or down on the cold, my satellite is not gonna work. No, I'm stuck on this one. I might have a lead out off that way. Also, it's gonna seem like it gets dark a lot earlier. All right, climb around in these next little holes. Ah. Well, if Gollum's gonna find me anywhere, it's gonna be in this segment. Oh, can I get up that? Maybe. Can I get down the other side? Not bloody likely, but we'll try, I guess. This is all gonna be too clingy. Not the sort of thing. Really want to be doing it. Let's climb down so I'm pissed. Oh. Fuck. Look, I'm hardly gonna bother Valley floor. You just gone the fuck around now. Man, the uh, scale of everything is just inhumane. This part doesn't look too bad. Or doesn't look too bad, is it? Do live in the floor. I think maybe, just maybe I can do it. Okay, I made it in the crack. The crack is nowhere near as friendly as me. You know, close, but actually it's not bad at all. I'm gonna lean across it. I made so little progress. Oh. I wonder if we're showing down one of those research buildings just watching with binoculars being like, what the hell is that guy doing? And now there's a crack at the fall. Next, it's nicer now that we're to bedrock. Because this stuff here is bedrock. The stuff down below is just these tumbled boulders. There's no bottom. This is one of these places where this would be easy without a pack, but I think my pack is get stuck in the front crawl through there. I think it's time to climb out of the crack to this other little crack. If I'm standing, it's not very good. A little too slippery there. Okay. Okay. Off the slippery part. And there's a nice crack. And here I just walk up the crack. But the top it's flat enough. I can get back to reasonably safe looking land. Man, that burned my calves. The other way does not look friendly, and this way looks okay. For now. It's probably just luring me into a trap. To be eaten by an ogre. Ugh. 
baggage and ruffians. Well, I like to get in pretty out in the valley. Down it's by the interstate down there. But I think I'm gonna get up before dark. And then it doesn't matter how far can I get down before dark. This is gonna be a total nightmare like the way up was. And I'm gonna end up camping in a little hole in the ground. Will there be little holes in the ground to camp in? Well, the bad news is I'm supposed to be on the other side of this mountain, not at the bottom. The good news is it's real pretty up here at this time. There's the last of the sun just disappearing on the mountain down there. We have this fantasy where I walk over the top and it's a nice gravel slope all the way down. The kind you can just run down. Feet sinking into the gravel with every step. I hate coming up slopes like that, but it's the only kind of slope that will get me down safely before dark at this rate. But I have a long day tomorrow and a long day the day after that. So, and a pretty long day today after that too, so I'd really like to get to the bottom of the mountain if at all possible, but oh, every stiff is difficult at this point. I think maybe up where that head-shaped boulder is the real top. Right, I guess we'll see. You see the bushes waving in the wind, it's a good sign. It's a good sign for being top. It's a bad time for being really freaking cold on the other side, but then we just have to see what the other side looks like. Is it a backdrop like this side was? Will it start out easy looking like this? And then rapidly become death-defying? We don't know. Well it is really the top. It is really windy. Fuck. Okay. Retreat. Retreat. Okay, well, I've decided I am going to try and go down. Actually, I'll just talk now while we're out of the wind. My rationale is that, one, I have a no-cooked dinner, so I don't really need to be out of the wind. As long as I can find a little shelter spot behind a rock to put my sleeping bag in, I'll be okay. And there are lots of little holes down in the rocks, so I can probably find a hole down in the rock on this side of the mountain. It's not too windy. Um, and two, the moon is out, and three, I just really like to get the other side, so I'm going to at least try going down this side, and if it gets too dark, I'll find a rock to huddle beneath. Okay, well, I'm only going to be able to see much with the light, so I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. Wow, that wind is strong. Hopefully it gets a little bit less strong as I get down a little bit. Well, if I start falling, I just need to spread open my, my jacket and catch the air. Our long, dark climb down the mountain is almost at an end because now the moon is rising up over the horizon there. We're walking out in the moonlight. Well, here's where I camped last night. I hope it's getting light enough you can see stuff now. Um, see, the moon is still there. It guided me down the last part of the mountain. Yep, time to go on going. We got a long day today. Got 23 miles to cover today. I'm not sure what the best way out of here is. It's part of the reason I camped here. <laughs> I was like, there's a flat spot, the first flat spot I've seen in a while. I'll just make camp and I'm basically down the mountain, but not completely out of the rocks yet. Um, do just some more of these bouldery things still to go. You see, if I think if I can get to that plane, then I'm good. I just have a little bit more of these rocks to go. Uh, yeah, last night wasn't that bad, you know. It wasn't maybe quite as amazing coming down the mountain as my dream scenario of just all gravel, but there was, you know, compared to the other side, it wasn't as steep. There was more soil between the rocks. The rocks were on average smaller. Um, there was 
basically very little cactus or cat claw. Um, so, you know, the part of the, ugh, sorry, I gotta move around to get down this rock here. You know, the part of the night before the moon came up over my horizon was a little dark coming down the mountain, but fortunately there were no major obstacles. A couple of minor rocks I needed to climb down, you know, this sort of scale of thing. Uh, but you know, these white rocks are very white and reflective. They're actually pretty easy to see even when it's dark. Ooh, that one shifted. Um, so it wasn't too bad. And then by the time I got down to the to this sort of stuff at the bottom, where it's a little bit flatter, but maybe a little more bouldery, a little more choya cactus. By that point I had the moonlight, so the agenda for today is I need to go keep going around the granite mountains from here. I, at this point I don't have to climb over any more of it except for maybe a few foothills. Just need to go around the mountains, stop at a spring to top up my water one more time. Um, and then I need to enter the Devil's Playground. Which is the second largest sand desert in California. One last mad boulder dash. Now the sun has risen. We have a nice golden light on the ridge here. I have the corner of the mountain here. There's a little wash along the base of the mountain and it actually cuts off the toe of the mountain in this neat little gorge. Man, look at that. I guess there's a dike running through here, it looks like, that's been weathered out. See, the, the light-colored rocks are basically the granite, the same granite we've been seeing, probably a 75 million year old granite. And these dark rocks here are a, a volcanic intrusion of a, of a dike, of a lava that came up probably to feed some small volcano. I don't know what age this is, but a lot of stuff like this is, broadly speaking, Miocene. So, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15 million years old, maybe a little, a little older. But here, the dike here, I guess, weathered a little more easily, and so it made this cool canyon that just cuts off the toe of the mountain. And the walls are both tilting parallel to the dike. This is a neat little canyon. Just a little waterfall here. Actually, there's little pockets of water in, in holes in this waterfall. That might be from rain. There's a little bit of precipitation. <sighs> Two days ago. The night, bef the last night of my break. I'm almost tempted to fill up this tank and skip to Coyote Springs, because just because it saves me a mile or two. Water looks a little algae horrific though. Coyote Springs will probably be fresher. I think Coyote Springs is actually at the base of the next canyon. So rather than going around this, it might take me out of the wilderness. I'm just gonna start cutting over this ridge and try to turn a little bit to the left here. Uh, again, both to stay in the wilderness and hopefully cut the corner a little bit. Uh, walk in the park. Well, I see a lot of brush down to the canyon there. It's generally, a good sign that you're not too far from a spring. Well, there's a little spring. I don't know if that's the best I'm going to get, but as long as it's a spring that refills, that should be enough. Wind blowing. Okay, now the taste test. It smells okay. A slight musty taste to it, but it's definitely not the worst water we've had. Even though I pumped a good probably seven liters out of that hole that only has a volume of, I don't know, probably half that. The level only went down maybe half an inch, so it is definitely a fast filling spring. Plenty of water left for the animals. For now, I just need to uh, basically continue on and uh, avoid the road um, that comes up this way. Other thing about the uh, granite mountains behind me here is, as you may have seen, they have a bunch of these pretty reliable uh, springs in them. And until 1860, they were home to a band of Chemehuevi Indians. Uh, but at that time, they were driven out by the U.S. Army, unfortunately. You can see there's a parking lot for Kelso Dunes, and so basically the uh, wilderness area ends. We have about a, a tenth of a mile of non-wilderness here, as I cross beneath the power lines here. This sign says wilderness boundaries. So I think once I cross this sign, I should be back in the wilderness. I'm now walking in a, roughly a straight line for the next 16 miles this way. Um, at a point just a little bit left of the top of that dune there, 
uh, you know, in principle, I could try and make this some kind of a straight line mission, but having already done one dune field at the KD's dunes, there's no way I'm walking in a straight line across the dune field. Uh, not with the constraint that I also need to cover a lot of ground, so. Well, here I go into the Kelso dunes. You might be wondering why is all this sand here? And the answer to that is that right now here we're about 30 miles downwind of the end of the Mojave River. Um, the Mojave River is one of these rivers that starts in the mountains, in this case the San Bernardino Mountains, and never makes it to the sea. It sort of dries up in the desert. Um, until about 25,000 years ago, however, the Mojave River actually ended at a lake. Or it would have been a dry lake in dry periods like now, probably a, an actual wet lake with you know, a significant amount of water in it um, during wetter periods like the Ice Ages. Um, and that lake we refer to as uh, Lake Mannix. Uh, but that lake actually um, sort of overtopped a natural barrier and, and had a major outflow, which many people think was probably a catastrophic outflow, sort of like a dam clap sort of thing. Other scientists say, no, there's no real evidence for that. Uh, but regardless, that lake suffered some sort of a failure and um, a lot of the sand that had been building up in that Lake Mannix uh, then flowed out uh, to the east through uh, a new canyon it carved called Afton Canyon. Well, so that sand ended up at the other end of Devil's Playground, 30 miles uh, to the northwest of here. And then the prevailing winds basically blew it until a bunch of it piled up here. Uh, in the Kelso dunes. So we'll be walking over the sand, like I said, for the next 23 miles, basically. Um, although a lot of that is going to be vegetation stabilized. So it'll be easier than walking over this stuff, which is going to be... This is the biggest dune I have to cross. It's the one right in front of me. Another curious thing about the Kelso dunes in particular is they are what is known as booming dunes, which me meaning that at some certain times um, you'll hear these booming sounds coming out of them. Um, sometimes you can even trigger the, dune, the booming sounds uh, by sliding down one of the dune faces. I like to think of it as sort of like a, a sound uh, laser uh, powered by sand grains. I, it's the winter, and my guess is that it's probably not going to get booming. One thing you have to remember on dunes like this is you need to travel with making natural sounds only when you step. Because you make a steady beat, then the uh, sandworms will come. Sorry, that's the uh, wrong planet. That's Arrakis. We're on Earth. No sandworms here. Huh. I will give you a hint for walking in sand dunes on Earth, which is follow the dark patches. So all the dark patches are where there's magnetite on the surface. Uh, the magnetite's just a little bit denser, heavier, uh, than the other standard minerals you find in sand, which are mostly quartz and feldspars. Um, and so when the wind blows, Typically, the magnetite will be left behind when those other minerals are picked up. And so places where there's a lot of magnetite on the surface are places where, um, where the dune is actually being stripped away by the wind. Whereas places with white sand are typically where the sand is, sand is accumulating more. And where the uh, dunes are being stripped away by the wind is typically going to be older sand that's been sitting around for a longer time and it's firmer and easier to walk on. Basically, the reason sand dunes have these steep slopes is because the wind blows over the top and then the sand settles down as steep as it can get. So basically, it piles up at that steepest angle, which is called the angle of repose. Okay, so we get this last slip face. Yeah, no squeaking or booming there. Okay. Oh, excellent. Now I got a nice view. San Bernardino Mountains over there, probably the San Gabriel over there. The Mojave River runs back behind these mountains and ends somewhere back uh, behind these mountains in the foreground of the Bristol Mountains. And so the Mojave River ends behind those. And then the sand, you can actually see there's a sandy plain back there. The sand blows all the way from there, 30 miles across that plain to where we are now. Um, now behind that plain, the mountains there are the Soda Mountains. Um, and tomorrow around noon, I hope to be at the foot of those mountains at the CSU Desert Research Station, uh, across those low sandy hills. Uh, to the right of those sandy hills is the Cowhole Mountains. And the big ones on the horizon behind them 
are I think the Avalos Mountains where I'll be in a few days. The goal is to get the base of the Soda Mountains by noon or ideally a little earlier tomorrow. As you can see those are still pretty far away. I'm meeting some friends there who are going to hike with me for the next week. <laughs> I don't want to be late for them. I don't know how far it is from here to there, but it's probably like 25 miles. <laughs> Did it. She doesn't look that bad from the top. But you can see it's already erased any signs of my footprints. It's just re landslided. Across the railroad, here comes a train. Yeah, so this the railroad here is the was built in 1905 originally as the San Pedro, Los Angeles, and Salt Lake Railroad. And now is Union Pacific. Oh, we're entering an area of old railroad debris near the tracks. Um, this place we're, we're crossing at is actually a place called Karen's Siding. Back in 1907, there's apparently a, a derailment near here. Um, you know, very close to the siding. Uh, one one fatality, five injuries. Uh, and based on the description in that old newspaper article in 1907, there wasn't much here then either, other than maybe a water tank. Okay, well, I don't see any trains coming now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross. Yeah, see, there's a, see what I mean? This is what I mean by sighting. See, there's one track there, and then it splits right here um, into two, so that way, there are trains coming opposite directions, so they can park one train on the siding here on the left uh, while the other train keeps going. Yeah, maybe this house actually does automatic control for the siding switch. Incidentally, you don't want to walk over the siding switches because if you they decide to switch that while you're standing on it, you might trap your foot and then you'll get run over by the train. So stay away from those. I really shouldn't cross train tracks at all, but if you're in the middle of the desert, there aren't a lot of other options. I mean, I'm not sure where the closest place to, to cross this at a formal crossing point is, but um, it's probably more than 10 miles from here. Uh, if I want to get to the place I wanted to camp to stay on schedule, I need to still hike another six and a half miles, which it looks like we're not enough to have sunlight for that, so it'll have to be partly by dark. I mean, the good news is it's going to be just a straight line across this plane, so shouldn't be hard to do in the dark. Just losing the sun right now. I haven't made it that far since I last logged in here. Probably still another six miles to go. Kelso Dunes starting to light up nicely. And of course the Granite Range. I still have some more miles to walk tonight. Well, once again it's become too dark to reliably see the mountain on the horizon I was heading towards. So I'm relying on celestial navigation, heading towards a star a little bit to the left of that mountain. Of course, that's not the pole star, so it's going to rotate over time. So you need to pay a little bit of attention to that. But I think I'm not going to be long, walking long enough for the rotation of the stars to make a big difference. And at some point, the moon should pop up. Well, the moon is up. Looks like I still need to go another three miles or so, though, if I want to get as far as I should, so I'm going to keep traveling by its rays.